Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 23C. This is the third of three tutorials focused on accounting for intangible assets. Tutorial 23A focused on recognition of internally generated intangible assets under both ASPE and IFRS. Tutorial 23B reviewed accounting for impairment of intangible assets under ASPE. And this tutorial will review accounting for impairment of intangible assets under IFRS. This tutorial is based on the application of the Rational Entity Impairment Model to intangible assets, either purchased or internally generated, under IFRS. There are three learning objectives for this tutorial. First is to determine what's known as the recoverable amount to determine if impairment of intangible assets is present. Second, to calculate impairment or recovery of intangible assets under IFRS. And third, to record impairment or recovery of intangible assets under IFRS. As with Tutorial 23B, this tutorial is based on the Romulus Pharmaceuticals Inc. B example, so please make sure you have reviewed that. Following the previous tutorials as well, this tutorial will illustrate impairment of internally generated intangible assets because that's the way the question was designed. However, this approach, as with Tutorial 23B under ASPE, is applicable to both internally generated and other purchased intangible assets or definite life intangible assets. Requirement 2 for this problem will require us to assume that RPI reports under IFRS and we're to prepare the journal entry to record any impairment or recovery at December 31st, 2021. So the first thing that we need to do is determine the recoverable amount under the IFRS Rational Entity Impairment Model. Review the data, you will find that uh, we are told that the annual undiscounted future cash flows are $67,000. So next we will take our annual undiscounted future cash flows of 67,000 and determine the discounted future cash flows, also known as DCF. And we commonly refer to that also in accounting as value in use, VIU. And how we do that is we have nine years at a discount rate of 7%. We take our $67,000 and enter that as a payment. And we have the costs to dispose or sell at the end of the useful life. And so we must enter that as a negative 50,000 FV, and we determine our present value to be $409,324. So once we've determined our discount of future cash flows to be $409,324, we want to determine what the fair value less cost to sell are. From the data, we're told that the fair value is $650,000, and the cost to sell are $50,000. So subtracting 50 from 650 will give us fair value, less cost to sell, of 600,000. Then we determine the carrying value. We uh, determine this in the previous tutorial, 23B, uh, under ASPE. The calculations are the same. So we had a 769,000 cost capitalized, no salvage value, and nine of 10 years are remaining. So the carrying value is $692,100. Finally, we're in a position to determine the recoverable amount, which we can call RA for short. Recall from accounting for property, plant, and equipment that we determined the recoverable amount to be the greater of the value in use or the fair value less cost to sell. So if we look at the information that we have so far, the value in use was determined to be $409,324 and the fair value less cost to sell was determined to be 600,000. So in applying our rule where we look at the greater of the value in use or the fair value less cost to sell, our recoverable amount is 600,000 because it's greater than the value in use of 409,324. Now we can ask, is the carrying value greater than the recoverable amount? And the answer is yes, because our carrying value of 692,100 is greater than the recoverable amount of 600,000. Next, we determine if the asset is impaired. And so to do that, we identify that if the carrying value is greater than the recoverable amount, the asset impaired. Basically, the recoverable amount is not enough to cover the current carrying value. Therefore, the asset is impaired. Then once we've determined the asset is impaired, we can proceed with the impairment calculation. We start basically with taking a recoverable amount of 600,000, and then we subtract the carrying value of 692,100. The result then is impairment of $92,100. And in essence, impairment then is basically equal to the recoverable amount minus the carrying value. 
Then, since we've determined that the asset is impaired, we can create a journal entry to debit loss on impairment, 92,100, and uh, credit uh, accumulated impairment losses for the patent for 92,100. Then we can show what the balance in our patent account is. We had an original cost of 769,000 and amortization of 76,900, resulting in an ending balance or carrying value prior to uh, impairment of 692,100. Uh, incidentally, this was also the same as we saw in tutorial 23B under ASPI. However, what is different in this tutorial from the uh, previous ASPI tutorial is the amount of impairment. So our impairment is 92,100. So we book that and our uh, balance in the accumulated impairment losses account for the patent is 92,100. And then by applying those two T accounts together, we can see that the carrying value is equal to 692,100 from the patent net. And we take off the accumulated impairment losses. That gives us an actual carrying value of 600,000. And then finally, we can show what a partial balance sheet would look like at December 31st, 2021. So non-current assets, intangible assets, patent net, at 692,100, so that comes from here. And the accumulated impairment losses for the patent of 92,100 subtracted from that, leaving us with a disclosed or presented carrying value on the balance sheet of $600,000. We will now proceed with requirement 2B, which is to basically go through the same process and determine if there's any impairment or recovery for the year ended December 31st, 2022. So as we did with the previous requirement, we will determine the recoverable amount starting with our annual undiscounted future cash flows. And because of the success of the drug, it was determined that the annual cash flow changed to now to be $125,000. Of course, under IFRS, we must discount those future cash flows. So now we have eight periods left. Remember the original 10 minus two years elapsed gives us eight periods, 7% interest, 125,000 payment and that 50,000 cost to sell are still included. So make sure you put that as a negative value as well. You should end up with a present value of $717,312. Then we identify what the fair value less cost to sell are. We determine that the fair value is 700,000 at that point and the cost to sell are still 50. So the fair value less cost to sell are a little different again because of the success of the drug. The carrying value, basically we have to recalculate the amortization and so we can show that the calculation for the carrying value would be the capitalized amount originally of 769,000 minus the 76,900 amortization less the impairment from the previous year of 92,100, again minus zero salvage value. And if we multiply that by eight of nine years remaining, it gives us $533,333. Next, the recoverable amount, again, the greater of the VIU or the discounted future cash flows or the fair value less cost to sell. And we've determined that the higher value in this case is the discounted future cash flows. They exceed the $650,000 fair value less cost to sell. So the recoverable amount is determined to be 717,312. As we did previously, we compare the carrying value to the recoverable amount and the 533,333 carrying value is actually less than the recoverable amount. So therefore the carrying value is not greater than the recoverable amount. After having uh, compared the carrying value to the recoverable amount, we ask, well, is the asset impaired? And well, in this case, the answer is no, because the carrying value in this case is less than the recoverable amount, as we determined here, if the carrying value is not greater, then it must be less. So since the carrying value is less than the recoverable amount, there is no impairment. But now we can ask ourselves a third question, and can we recover previous impairment? And the answer is yes. Under IFRS, we can recover previous impairment losses. To calculate the impairment recovery, what we can do is we can uh, determine what the maximum carrying value is. So the maximum carrying value is the capitalized amount. That was the original amount, recall that was capitalized. And if we were not to have impaired that and determined that the, the asset would still have 10 years life, that at the end of 2022, there would be eight years remaining. And so that original capitalized value times eight over 10 would mean that the maximum carrying value we could show on the balance sheet is $615,200. Again, this is if there were no impairment. 
The carrying value at the end of 2019, which includes the impairment, as we saw in requirement 2A, is $533,333. Therefore, we were able to recover $81,867 in previous impairment losses. To record that journal entry, we will debit the accumulated impairment losses account for $81,867 and credit the recovery of impairment losses of 81,867. So this would be an uh, income statement uh, account. And of course, we know that the accumulated impairment losses is a balance sheet account. Finally, we can see what all our accounts would look like after this. So beginning with the uh, ending balance at 2021. The amortization that would have taken place in 2022 calculated as the carrying value of 692,100 minus the 92,100 accumulated impairment. And then we would divide that all by nine years. And that gives us 67,667. That means the ending balance on a net basis after all accumulated amortization in the patent account is 625,433. Then we go over to the accumulated impairment losses account where we had a 2021 balance of 92,100. And then we had this journal entry here, which basically was debited. So we have a recovery of 81,867, leaving us with a balance that is potentially recoverable in the future again, because we didn't use it all up, of 10,233. And it's not a matter of using it all up as long as the original carrying value on a unimpaired basis continues to be lower than the recoverable amount, then we can still recover some of this. At the end of the day, we have a patent account balance of 625,433, a accumulated impairment losses amount for 10,233, leaving us with a carrying value of 615,200. And then we can show what this would look like on our balance sheet at December 31st, 2022. We have a patent balance, 625,433, accumulated impairment losses, 10,233, for a carrying value of 615,200, and we are done. And finally now for some key points to remember. So intangible assets, whether purchased or internally generated, are all subject to the rational entity impairment model under IFRS. In that model, the recoverable amount is determined to be the greater of the value in use, or, or also known as discounted cash flow, so the greater the value in use and the fair value less cost to sell. If the asset's carrying value exceeds the recoverable amount, then the asset is impaired. And then we calculate impairment as the difference between the carrying value and the recoverable amount. Finally, recoveries of previous impairment losses are permissible under IFRS, but they cannot exceed the assets carrying value, excluding any impairments. So this concludes tutorial 23C and all tutorials related to accounting and impairment of intangible assets.